We've seen this in spades at Bilderberg. And that's why we want to talk to Daniel Estelin about that aspect of free press. The fact that there would be no coverage on the outside while the heads of large media organizations like the Wall Street Journal, like the Washington Post, like the New York Times would meet privately inside of Bilderberg with these world leaders at the same time that they were meeting with them. They would pretend that it didn't exist. They would ridicule and laugh at the early investigators like Jim Tucker, Daniel Estelin, Alex Jones, who would expose this. They pretended that it didn't exist. But let's look at how in the uh, Tiananmen Square uh, event, I, I want to get behind some of the things that have, have uh, come out behind the story from the people who were there, the soldiers who were there. Now, the first thing that most people... Remember, the main thing that most people remember is that courageous fellow who stood in front of the tank. And as this uh, ABC News article said, they said, uh, little is known about the man who blocked the path of the column of tanks in Tiananmen Square 25 years ago. He's been called Tank Man, the unknown rebel, the unknown protester. Nobody knows what happens to him. Now, there's been some reports that he smuggled his way out. He got out to Taiwan. That's Cold water's been poured on that by a lot of the protesters and journalists who were there. They don't believe that that's what happened. Personally, I think that uh, a fellow like that was probably front and center when the killing began. I, I doubt that he made it out of there. And so, but, but I look at that and I think about the tank driver. You know, when we were at Bunkerville, there were people in the White House, at least one person, suggesting that they use drones on those people who were there. When we were criticized for having women and children in front, which didn't happen, by the way, that was a supposition of a retired sheriff, uh, Sheriff Mack, who said that that did not happen. Sheriff Mack was not even there. There was no plans to do that. It, in fact, did not happen. I was there. I was walking with those people at the front. That absolutely did not happen. But we were harangued about that. But even though... We were there, even though we stood that down peacefully, we were criticized as being the provocateurs, as being the dangerous ones. They took a picture of one guy who was pointing a weapon, and they ignored the fact that we had weapons pointed at us the entire week, that they were pointing weapons at us at that time, that they were threatening over a loudspeaker to shoot us if we didn't go back. Uh, I look at this, though, and, and I'm grateful that they didn't give that order to use drones. I'm grateful that the soldiers and the, uh, the BLM contractors that were there, that they didn't fire. They would have been remembered as murderers. That would have set off a chain of events that would have been huge. That did not happen in Tiananmen Square. Instead, eventually, they did fire. Eventually, they did what this person, this is uh, someone who was a 20-year-old student. This is the parents of a 20-year-old student who was among the first to die. And they said he was shot in the head, in the shoulder, and in the chest by advancing troops. And then he was deliberately skewered through the belly with a bayonet. He was one of hundreds, perhaps thousands, of Chinese citizens that were slaughtered during that period of time. Now, in spite of that, in spite of that, there is collective amnesia in China 25 years after Tiananmen Square, according to the LA Times. They say that uh, they give examples of people who are now under house arrest. This is the way that they are keeping this quiet. They control the press, they control the textbooks, and they control the dissidents. Every year, one of these participants who's continued to uh, live in Beijing, every year about this time of year, he is put under house arrest and not allowed to go out. It says that the government has long determined to impose a collective amnesia about the weeks-long pro-democracy demonstration that shook cities across China 25 years ago. They're controlling it American style now. Instead of going in and putting this down with, uh, with troops who are shooting and killing people, running over them with tanks, now what they do is they silence them by ignoring it, by censoring the information. This guy who's under house arrest says, I think we need another June 4. That's what they call it. They don't call it Tiananmen Square like we do. He says, I don't mean we need another incident full of blood. I, need, I mean we need millions of people to go to the streets and to demand change. That gets their attention. When people showed up to protest the banker bailouts on 9-12, when the Tea Party showed up in mass in Washington, that got their attention. We haven't seen anything like that before or since, but we need to follow through on that. We need to understand that we can peacefully turn this back. 
And we need to also understand that soldiers can peacefully turn this back. Now, another quote here from the LA Times, it says, in 1989, the Communist Party tried to lock the doors of major campuses and universities so that students would not take to the streets, but they still found a way out. After 1989, they found a way to lock their thinking to lock their minds. That's what one of the demonstrators that was there. And they said that locking comes from a powerful cocktail of materialism, cynicism, and national nationalism, I'm sorry, fostered by the party's headlong embrace of a market economy and government-sponsored patriotic education campaign. See, that's the way they bought their silence. They bought their silence by giving them economic prosperity and telling them that you can have that, but you cannot, cannot talk about politics. How far away are we from that? We see that our government is trying to censor politics. We see movements, and we're going to talk about that right after we come back from break. Stay tuned. We're going to talk about movements to create shielded journalism as well as to amend the First Amendment, which came out Help this week. The corrupt Stay with two party us. failure. Tisha Cassida for Congress. Donate now at Cassida2014.com. C A S I D A 2014.com. The next generation for liberty. The independent voice we need. Paid for by the committee to elect Tisha Cassida to Congress. Hi, Ted Anderson with Midas Resources. Is it time to convert paper 401ks and IRAs to solid gold and silver yet? Get our 10 Reasons book free. Call 800 686 2237. That's 800-686-2237. Attention all radio listeners. Survival Life is giving away free credit card knives exclusively to our radio listeners. Visit FreeCovertKnife.com to see this covert knife in action and to claim yours free. It's the same knife you've seen in airline magazines for $29.95. But today, it's yours free. Just pay shipping and handling. Go to FreeCovertKnife.com. Go now. General, what do you think about the FBI saying that there's a terror alert on Monday about a potential Fort Hood situation? The police are shoving people, shoving Alex, shoving the crowd. Here we go, folks. I'm being assaulted. Whether it's the radio show, the news websites, documentary films, or the nightly news, InfoWars is the tip of the spear. Is this another false flag stage attack to take our civil liberties and put more homeland security while sticking their hands down on the pants on the streets? It's up to us to set brush fires in the minds of men and women everywhere. And that's what PrisonPlanet.tv is designed. To do. If you watch, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. What we see now is a war against reality. It's a war against the truth. It's more vital than ever that supporters of freedom become members of PrisonPlanet.tv and share their membership with up to 11 friends and family. Visit InfoWarsNews.com today. Become a member, share your membership, and help take the InfoWar to the next level. How long would you last if all grocery stores cease to exist? Not in America. This can't happen in America. Because of my concern about our government, I was looking at survival stuff. I was raised as a Girl Scout, and their motto was to be prepared. Food for Patriots was an opportunity for me to be able to put some things aside. I said, well, this is a product worth having, seeing as it's so good. Like the pricing for what I got. I like the containers they were shipped in. They keep in touch with you. You get your emails. You get your confirmations. The customer service is just absolutely fantastic. Plan on buying probably about uh, four more of these minimum. And it just came so quick. It came right when they said it would come. Thanks for supplying all this stuff for us because I think we're all going to be needing it in a very short time. Join over 50,000 Americans who have trusted food for patriots. Go to GetSurvivalFood.com to learn more. That's GetSurvivalFood.com. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and we've just been talking about the 25th anniversary of Tiananmen Square, and I said I wanted to get behind the scenes. I wanted to hear stories from the Army's side. And there was an article from the New York Times uh, two days ago, and they had a quote from one of the generals. They, he was called in and told that they wanted him to use his troops against civilians there, and he refused to do it. He said, I would rather be beheaded than to be a criminal in the eyes of history. That is a choice that American soldiers are one day going to have to make. We know 
that the American military has targeted domestic dissenters as terrorists. We know that they are planning for this in their scenarios. We've walked the streets. InfoWars reporter, I was there with uh, Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs. We walked through a town that they have built specifically to practice for martial law. This is not after they've gone in with the uh, Air Force and blown up uh, an area with uh, shells of buildings that they're taking over. This is an area where they still have all of the glass in the buildings, the traffic lights are still working. They're going in and practicing taking over a town that in every detail is an American town. And they have one that the Marines are using down in Camp Lejeune as well that has suburban areas, that has farm areas. This one that we went to, and this is uh, file footage that they shot, we were actually able to go in and walk those streets a couple of weeks ago. That is what they're preparing for. So they're going to have to determine someday whether they're going to just stand down as this general did or whether they're going to stand up to the tyranny. That's what he did not do. And I want to read you a quote from one of the soldiers that was there. He was only 17 years old at the time. He was with a group of 10,000 soldiers. Again, this is from the New York Times. He said that for three days, there were weary marooned soldiers who clutched their rifles in the wilting sun. He recalled how residents and students would bring them food and escorted them to toilets, all the while bombarding them with the message that theirs was a just cause. Even in the restroom, there was no reprieve, he said. If one student would go hoarse yelling, another would take his place. So this is a group of soldiers. They're surrounded. This is 10,000 soldiers, but they're surrounded by many, many more people who were telling them, what this is about, trying to educate them. Well, what happened was the government was concerned that these troops are going to join the people, so they pulled them out of there and they sent the soldiers to a re-education camp. And for 10 days, they said, former soldiers said they were fed a confusing diet of indoctrination at their encampments on the outskirts of Beijing. They studied the speeches of Mr. Ding, who was the leader there. They were told that the demonstrators were the work of a subversive minority bent on toppling the Communist Party. Sounds very much like the way they portray the Tea Party in America now. You have to educate yourself. You have to understand and you have to where, understand where your compass is. What are your fundamental principles that you're going to stand on? And will you stand down or will you stand up to this type of tyranny when it comes to America? And then finally, to look at how they have suppressed this information over the years, what does it take in order to do that? Well, it takes control of the means of communication. And we see that this is happening in America now. We've got the FCC asserting its ownership over the Internet. We see that they are probably going to allow Comcast, the number one largest provider of information in the United States controlling the pipelines as well as much of the content to absorb the number two that would be Time Warner. If that happens and that's combined with a removal of net neutrality what you're going to have is effective censorship. If people cannot get broadband without paying extra for it, if uh, some outlets, independent outlets cannot afford that, their voices are not going to be heard. When we were at Copenhagen, there were many individual journalists there. Those honest journalists, those real journalists, they will be swept aside in a regime where there is no net neutrality. That's what they're working on. They're also working on even fundamentally changing the First Amendment. That's what Democrats are suggesting. Democrats like Chuck Schumer, we're going to talk about that right after the break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. This is GCN, the Genesis Communications Radio Network. Why does the United States spend the largest percentage of GDP in the world on health care? Why do we have the highest cancer rates on the planet? The highest rates of diabetes, autism, and every other major disease. It all comes down to one thing. We are what we eat. Our food is devoid of nutrition and processed with poisons and additives. Our water is filled with toxic poisons and big pharma runoff. All of this has been engineered by design. We can turn the tide against the eugenicist by giving ourselves the nutrients our body desperately needs. To learn more, visit InfoWarsHealth.com. The site is literally packed with audio and video featuring top health professionals who don't bow down to big pharma. The fight against the New World Order starts
resonates with you and you can't stand against the machine of your sick, tired, and obese when you visit InfoWarsHealth.com. Be sure and check out the catalog with nearly 400 life-changing products and get free shipping when you sign up for AutoShip.